These are the times that Chef Ramsay got served absolutely disgusting food. And this next chef grilled the only thing that you shouldn't grill and made a mess out of it. In the 12th episode of season 5, Chef Ramsay visited Park's Edge in Inman Park, Georgia. The restaurant was owned by two best friends named Jorge and Richard, who were sadly clueless. Having no experience in the industry, Richard and Jorge underestimated the hard work required to run a restaurant. They made several mistakes, many of which violated health codes. Things were so disastrous that in just three years of starting the business, the health department had forced them to close twice. Already in shambles, the owners made their employees work overtime to make ends meet. But Richard single-handedly made the entire scenario even worse thanks to his one stupid comment. In an interview with the local news, Richard ended up triggering the locals when he accused them of being Yep, that's apparently the reason why his restaurant wasn't doing well. In truth, the owners put up a tent outside their restaurant without permission, mind you, and were selling alcohol without a valid permit. I don't think you need a degree to understand that invading space and distributing alcohol requires a certain amount of paperwork. I mean, come on, everyone knows that, but not Richard. Having previously worked at an air freight company, this clueless man drove his entire restaurant into the ground with one comment. Now, of course, Chef Ramsay did his research before heading into this crazy establishment, but he had no idea that he was going to be in for a big surprise. Jorge and Richard had come up with their own ways to run the place. And Chef Ramsay got a glimpse of this from the get-go simply by looking at the menu. After a brief conversation with Richard and Jorge, when Chef Ramsay was ready to order some food, he noticed that the menu lacked any direction whatsoever. There were a couple of dishes that were Mexican, and there were a few that were Asian. But wait, there was also a hint of Indian? Okay, well, it looks like they wanted to fuse different cultures together. But all it really caused was confusion. On top of that, Amy, the server, surprised Chef Ramsay when she confirmed a very serious doubt that he had. While going over the menu, Chef Ramsay came across a dish called the Grilled Caesar Salad. Now, of course, all of us know what a Caesar salad is, but Chef Ramsay wanted to check which part of it was actually grilled. When Amy said something totally out of this world, Chef Ramsay had to ask her twice before he actually understood what she said. And this is how that went down. The lettuce is grilled. Uh -huh. Top it on the grill. You never heard of that? No. The famous chef would be even more shocked when he finally received the dish. The lettuce was actually grilled. Honestly, it was way more than grilled, it was charred. Chef Ramsay was so appalled that he actually found it amusing. He then went on to share his feelings with the rest of the customers and said this. This is the first for me, a grilled Caesar salad. And I was there to eat. grilled the lettuce. Soon after, he asked if anyone had ever seen something as hideous as this. And well, it doesn't surprise me that it was a first for everyone as well. When Chef Ramsay dug into this mess of a dish, he realized that the chef who had made this simply threw the lettuce on a plate. He didn't even have the patience to cut the butt off, nor did he even try to clean it. The famous chef simply moved the entire chunk of lettuce aside and tried the chicken, which sadly turned out to be just as bad. Finally, this is what Chef Ramsay had to say about the dish. Now, this restaurant had two owners who were at odds with each other. Chef Jorge went to culinary school, but he didn't get proper training. Richard, on the other hand, just couldn't handle the pressure. So, whenever things got busy, Richard took the easy way out. He would go to the front of house and just smile and waste time as his restaurant crashed and burned. But if things got more intense, Richard would simply just disappear. Now, that's really not what you'd expect from a restaurant owner. However, when Chef Ramsay stayed back to observe the dinner service, he found out more atrocious things about the owners. The cooking staff, who were often chastised by Chef Jorge, had way more experience than both the owners put together. 10 years of experience to be exact. But sadly, they didn't have a say in anything. Chef Ramsay observed Jorge at work, and the man was a complete disaster. With the orders piling on, he quickly got confused and overwhelmed. Several customers weren't impressed with the food, and their complaints ranged from the food being too spicy, too raw, too dry, or even just freezing cold. Richard had gone into hiding once again. Remember how the restaurant was closed multiple times for a health code violation? Well, it looks like Richard and Jorge didn't learn a thing from that. When Chef Ramsay inspected the kitchen, he found stale and moldy food, cooked food that had gone bad, and loads of spoiled chicken stacked next to each other. Chef Ramsay also learned that Richard often drank on the job. And since both owners didn't communicate very well with each other, Chef Jorge didn't even know about Richard's drinking spree. 
It doesn't surprise me that the restaurant failed two more health inspections after the show aired. The owners promised to bounce back with a new restaurant at a new location, but this never happened. These two dreadful owners who put their customers' lives at risk lost their precious business, but this next restaurant served Chef Ramsay an inconceivable combination. What's worse is that they were this close to serving him mouse feces. In the fourth episode of season two, Chef Ramsay visited Trobiano's in Great Neck, New York. The Italian restaurant was owned by Anthony Trobiano and his girlfriend Tiffany's parents, Joe and Pat. The restaurant was struggling with some fierce competition from the other Italian restaurants, but that wasn't the only reason why they were failing. Anthony attended culinary school, and this made him believe that he was a seasoned executive chef. He was so full of himself that he never bothered to listen to anyone. At first, the restaurant was doing really well. But when the food quality dropped down, the business came down with it. Joe and Pat were $500,000 in debt, but Anthony didn't change. After all, it wasn't his money. Things had gotten so bad that Joe and Pat pitched in to help around at the restaurant. And they worked all day to make things work, but Anthony was so stubborn that they slowly started resenting each other. When Chef Ramsay arrived, he mistook the an early bird sign for a for sale sign, and this pissed them off. The idea for the early bird was from Anthony, but it didn't bring in any money. When Chef Ramsay sat down to taste the food, he came across a dish with one of the worst combinations ever. It was a chicken-wrapped shrimp. Chef Ramsay was obviously not impressed. He called Joe over and said this. I've never had a shrimp that hard. Why would you stick a shrimp inside a chicken? It's one of his creations, I guess. Yep, the dish that looked like chicken but tasted like shrimp was Anthony's creation. I mean, who else would come up with something as crazy as this? Chef Ramsay sent the dish right back to the kitchen, and Anthony was shocked by this. While Anthony believed that all of his dishes were perfect, he made a habit of sending them out without tasting them even once. But Anthony wasn't ready to accept his mistakes. When Chef Ramsay started to confront him, Anthony pulled a defensive shield over himself. Anthony's ego was one of the main reasons why this restaurant was failing. But when Chef Ramsay returned for an inspection, Anthony's foul behavior was the last straw for Chef Ramsay's patience. The famous chef noticed that every corner of the kitchen was dirty. The floor, the equipment, and the plates that were stored close to the floor were dirty. But what Chef Ramsay found next was absolutely disgusting. Just as he was looking around behind the equipment, he found this. What's that on there? The droppings. They're not receipts. Those were actual mouse droppings. Chef Ramsay was furious when Anthony told him that the staff were supposed to do all the cleaning and he never did any of it. Well, being a half a million dollars in debt is inevitable with such an arrogant and irresponsible person at the top. But this next restaurant served Chef Ramsay the most tasteless soup he's ever had, and you won't believe what he compared its taste to. In episode 7 of season 2, Chef Ramsay visited Hannah and Mason in Cranberry, New Jersey. Hannah and Mason was a French-style bistro owned by Chris Posner and Brian Kelly. Chris and Brian previously worked as chefs in the same restaurant under the previous owner. And eventually, they decided to buy it together, but they didn't divide up the work evenly. While Brian was lazy, Chris did everything from managing the staff to ordering the food and even cooking. The restaurant was only open three evenings a week since Brian didn't like working his nights off. This affected the business to such an extent that the staff often complained about inconsistent pay. But Brian didn't understand the gravity of the situation. Considering the fact that the restaurant was run by chefs, Chef Ramsay expected the food to be half decent. But all of his hopes were destroyed when he was served a baked onion soup, some quiche, and a lamb lollipop. Although all the dishes were revolting, the baked onion soup was the worst. Everything from its presentation to its texture, Chef Ramsay disliked the entire dish. When the famous chef moved the entire chunk of garnish aside, it looked like a mound of crap. That's just nasty. Anyway, when Chef Ramsay dug through all of the bread and cheese, he finally made his way to the few ounces of soup that tasted like this. Absolutely tasteless. It tastes like I've just had the dregs from the dishwasher. But what could you expect from a place where the owner was scared of receiving feedback, while the other could care less about the business in the first place? Anyway, let's fast forward to the Valentine's Day dinner service, which is a busy day for any restaurant. Since most of the food was substandard, it's not surprising that most of their dates left. And just as expected, nobody was checking the food before it left the kitchen. In fact, some rotting lettuce almost left the kitchen, but thanks to Chef Ramsay who flagged it down, it did it. When Ramsay questioned the staff about this, they told him that the lettuce came pre-washed and they never washed it before using it. Sure, this is disgusting, but it gets even worse. 
To Chef Ramsay's utter horror, he noticed a week-old moldy dessert missing from the display tray on one of the customer's plates. Chef Ramsay was just about done with the carelessness displayed at this restaurant, and he shut the kitchen down for good. Well, I hope the customer didn't eat the stale dessert before Chef Ramsay shut the place down. But this next restaurant served Chef Ramsay a dish that almost got him sick. In the very first episode of the UK version of Kitchen Nightmares, Chef Ramsay visited Bonaparte's in Silsden, England. Bonaparte was a wine restaurant owned by Sue Ray and Tim Gray, who worked as the executive chef. Sue had previously worked many jobs except at a restaurant, so she wanted to try something new, but failed miserably at it. The restaurant was already a year old when Chef Ramsay visited and was already struggling to stay open. Tim Gray wasn't even a trained chef. He was the dishwasher at the restaurant, but became the head chef after Sue couldn't find anyone to fill in the position. While Tim's ultimate goal was to become a famous chef, he did end up becoming famous, but for all the wrong reasons. Tim was an absolute mess in the kitchen. He showed no respect for his job or the food that he made. During the service, Chef Ramsay noticed that everything was poorly done. From the appetizers to the entrees, the food was either burnt or incomplete. But Sue had no idea about the situation in the kitchen. The kitchen was turned into an epicenter of health hazards, but the head chef and his assistant simply didn't care. To further test his abilities, Chef Ramsay challenged him to cook him a signature dish, and he made scallops with black pudding sauce. Just after tasting it, Chef Ramsay started to do this. <laughs> it's gotta be sick. <laughs> he was horrified. Tim had just served him rancid scallops that could have easily killed him. But Tim only understood that they had gone bad when he tasted them and started to feel sick himself. Yeah, that's how reckless he was. Looking at the condition of the restaurant, all Chef Ramsay could say was this. It's grim. It's grim. And it's out of order. But that wasn't the end of it. Chef Ramsay later discovered that Tim was so ignorant that he never knew that food kept in the fridge went bad. Well, that's a deal breaker right there. I mean, look, I don't even have to go into further detail now that you know that the head chef didn't even have basic knowledge. Anyway, in this next restaurant, Chef Ramsay became a daredevil when he requested a dish that the server specifically warned him not to get. I told him not to get it. In the 12th episode of season 3, Chef Ramsay visited Sushi Co. in Thousand Oaks, California. The restaurant was owned by Akira and Lisa Hatai and was run by them along with their children Sammy and Hana. With his success and skills, Akira went up the ladder to become the manager and then the owner. At the time of Chef Ramsay's visit, the couple had opened Sushi Co. in its new location four years ago. They started off great and business was booming, but they soon started to lose $15,000 to $20,000 a month. Well, when Chef Ramsay sat down to taste the dishes, he was introduced to another crazy combination of food. So, do you remember the chocolate pizza from the Keating Hotel? Yeah, chefs sometimes lose it when it comes to creativity. But guess who else is creative? Well, you're listening to him and have been for the last few minutes. So if you haven't already, drop a like on my video and subscribe for more content like this. It's completely free, so there's practically no reason not to do it. Show me some of your love, guys. With that out of the way, speaking of creativity gone wrong, Akira went one notch higher when he presented Chef Ramsay this. Yep, this is what Akira calls the sushi pizza. Ever heard anything as absurd as this before? Shocked by the awfully disgusting combination of food, Chef Ramsay braved himself to try the sushi pizza, and this is how he reacted. Sorry. Do I even have to explain anymore? The dish was an insult to pizza and to Japanese culture. On top of that, the so-called sushi pizza was rancid. But Chef Ramsay simply had to get this off his chest, so he met up with the chef and completely roasted him for several minutes. And surprisingly, the head chef couldn't agree more with him. Take a look at this interaction, guys, because it couldn't get any weirder. Chef Ramsay said, Sushi pizza was a f joke. Right, okay. Hideous, disgusting, and an insult to Japanese culture, and an insult to a f pizza house. Akira was completely lost. And while he was the one who was bringing the restaurant down, he thought it was the other way around. Well, this is what happens when someone has a major lack of confidence and self-esteem. But Akira had one more problem, he couldn't follow instructions. The owners were already on the hunt for a new location while this episode was being taped. But it looks like they never found the right place, and with that came the end of Sushi Co. So these were the times that Chef Ramsay was served terrible dishes. 
I wonder how many times Chef Ramsay had to actually see the doctor after eating all the rancid crap that the restaurants offered him. Which reminds me, I'm a lot more scared to go to restaurants after watching this show because I just can't see what goes on in the kitchen. Am I the only one who feels this fear? Let me know down below. Thanks for watching guys!